Uh, I want you to take notice of the protective clothing. I've got a really good dust mask, a helmet with a screen visor. I did wear glasses and gloves and a heavy jacket for this job because this job is one of the most dangerous in terms of getting stuck and getting hurt. It's a Phoenix Canariensis. It's a Canary Island date palm. There's actually two of them growing side by side. So this video is really geared for the guys that are um, maybe California or Florida that have to deal with these trees or maybe Mexico. But um, these are some of the ugliest, dirtiest, nastiest trees that we have to get into for a lot of reasons. Um, one big reason is uh, they're, they're full of rats and squirrels and sometimes birds, owls and all kinds of other critters get up inside there. They are ugly, ugly trees to work on. And I want you to take a close look at these spines here. These spines are all six to eight inches long. The dead ones aren't quite as bad because they get softer, but the green ones, oh, those things you could break them off and hammer them into a 2 by 4 We've had a lot of instances where people have been hurt by these things. And it's either on the ground where you walk into them and get one in the calf, or more often if you're up in the tree, you'll make a cut and they'll fall down on you. And you notice the angle that they're all presenting themselves. All right, quick story. Stories are good. Listen to the old guys' tree stories because you can learn a lot from us old guys. This is uh, going back to early 90s. I had a guy working for me who was one of the best climbers I've ever seen. His name was Mike Majors. And I put him up in a date palm, and he was just wailing on it. He was going really fast. And one of these green ones flipped down and came down and caught him in the wrist. And that sharp thorn, that big long thorn went all the way through his lit through his wrist and and it showed itself it didn't break the skin on the other side but there was a bump and there's little tiny uh, serrations on these spines that that the doctor wouldn't pull it back out and because it's a cone shaped spine you know he didn't want to push it all the way through either so <laughs> sadly mike ended up living with that damn thing in his wrist. It took about a year before his body absorbed it. But it happened so fast. Uh, you know, I was there at the job. Ah, oh, man, these things are nasty. You can see all the nests that I'm pulling out of here. And, you know, there's I could see um, critters running around. Little rats were running around in this tree. There was, there was squirrels up there and spiders. And, you know, it's like everything wants to get you in this tree. So you, you, you got to take your time. Now, you, you notice I'm, I'm working over on the right side of this palm. Ideally, the best way to cut is, is from the right to the left so that your, you, the bar gets in close as, as, as possible. But sometimes you've got to kind of work where you're at. And, you know, you, you can't just keep wrapping yourself around with a bucket. So you do a little one side, a little on the other side. Might have to move the bucket to get it. Um, one thing that's interesting about this job is we were not paid to clean up the old trunk. Now there's a couple ways to, to trim these trees and the absolute best way is if you've got all these old cut off frond ends on these trees, the best thing is to start at the bottom and you re-sculpt the trunk all the way up. But um, that would have tripled the cost of this, this bid. As it was, these, these trees were bid way too low. I didn't bid them, Lucy bid them, but uh, I, you know, we, we, it was a part of a big complex, and we've got about two weeks on this complex, and this is the very first thing that we did. I wanted to get the ugly part of the job done and out of the way. Another thing to think about is if you're doing a really ugly, dirty job, try and do it first thing in the morning before it gets hot. You know, the weather is starting to change, and, you know, it's been getting up into the 80s, and if you're in these tight spots, you've got all your protective gear on, you're cooking, you're, you're sweating, you're re ah, that got me right there. Didn't hurt me, though. I got lucky. Ah, it's just, sometimes, you know, you're just going, and, and something will catch, and it'll pull out funny. So, I know this is kind of a long, drawn-out video, and, and for a lot of you, you're going to be 
disinterested in this. But if you are a climber that sometime is going to get involved in trimming one of these date palms, um, pay close attention. You know, it, I, I'm using the saw uh, with one hand, and a lot of people really frown on that. But the advantage of being able to manage the sharp frond with the other hand and carefully, you know, cut and pull and cut and pull and work it. It's, it's very systematic, and if you do it careful and don't get on a roll, you know, sometimes I'll get in there and I'll cut four or five or six fronds at once, and, and they will fall away from me. But you don't want to do it if they're in tight or in close. If they're further out, and you can let them drop. Uh, but always be prepared because, you know, some of these things will rotate, and the end of that frond will catch on the trunk, and then it'll flip back those big thorny, um, thorny ends and, and boy that it, it's it's nasty I mean just look at those things then you've got the inside of the tree where you've got the old seed pods and this thing hasn't been worked on in I don't know 15 or 20 years so it was it was a mess I want to talk a little bit about using the electric saw up here um, in this instance uh, I loved having the electric saw because you're working in essence you're working in kind of a almost a tent environment so the exhaust fumes from a gasoline saw can get overwhelming when you're in an area where you don't get a lot of aeration so the uh, as you can see the footage is different in this video I'm using my new GoPro and I've switched from one setting to another I wanted to see what the the real wide angle <laughs> part is and the world feels like it's in a big circle. All the videos beforehand, or almost all of them, I've used um, a camera with more of a realistic aspect ratio. So you, what you see is, is actually what it looks like. And from this perspective, it looks like I'm about 80 feet in the air. <laughs> really, the tree was only about 20, 25 feet tall at the most. But uh, that GoPro does have a way of exaggerating things. In some cases, it's great because you get a, a much wider um, visual. You can see more of the, the image. And this extreme wide angle, it's a little bit much. You know, a lot of times I look at other people's uh, YouTube channels where they're taking out trees and, and you know, Somebody will be up in a tree that's maybe 40 or 50 feet tall, but it looks like they're hundreds of feet in the sky because of that extreme angle. And I kind of have to chuckle about it. But, you know, I'm not trying to exaggerate things in my videos. But uh, I, I will start using the GoPro a little bit more because it allows me to... In this case, I mounted it to my helmet. And you can see what my hands are doing. So... Um, for those of you that are still with me, <laughs> this is kind of a long drawn out video, and I apologize for that, but um, I, I'm, I'm hoping that by, by seeing how I'm doing it, you can get a better idea of how you would handle it. Now there's a lot of different types of palm trees as well. You know, there's, oh, in California alone, we must have 15 or 20 different uh, species of palm tree, and most of them have something real sharp and dangerous. But I think the, the date palm, the Canary Island date palm with those really long spikes is probably the most dangerous of all. Because the green ones, there's a green one there, you can see those spikes. They, they are really, really heavy, those butt ends. You know, some of these things will weigh you know, 10 or 15 pounds, you know, they're, they're, which may not seem like a lot, but that has a driving force to impale you. Uh, there was another story about a guy a long time ago. I think it was about 25 years ago. It was some guy was working up in a date palm, and one came down and impaled him in the chest. And one of those spikes went right into his heart and killed him on the spot. So I've got a world of respect for these damn things. I hate them. Climbing these things is also very, very hard. Much harder than working in a bucket. If you can do them in a bucket, by all means, use the bucket truck because it allows you to have a little bit of distance and you can position yourself. Whereas if you've got your belt on, you've got a strap around the tree. Uh, boy, you, you pretty much have to skin the trunk so that you're working 
in a relatively clean environment. You end up doing circles around the, the trunk, working your way up to start it over, and it, it is so, so much harder. Um, there, there is the possibility of using a pole saw uh, off of a, a ladder on these things. It, it's important to strap the ladder to the tree, and you can use the pole saw, but it's a little bit harder to make a real clean look about it. And once again, you know, it's it's based upon the bid and the type of work. This is a, um, a complex that they don't have a whole lot of money, and they wanted us to clean it up, but you know, it, it, you know, they they couldn't afford to do a job the right way, uh, so we did the job correctly, but not as clean as it could have been done. So if they want to pay us to go back there. Uh, so be it, but that, that wasn't part of this bid. So it's kind of interesting for me to watch this. This is the first uh, video that I've gotten the, the GoPro out. And I can see how it's, it's going. Sometimes I see I'm moving my head too much. Some people will mount the GoPro on a chest harness, and I think that reduces the, the back and forth motion because when you're up in the tree, you're constantly looking for people on the ground, looking for what's going on. Another thing I wanted to talk about uh, briefly is you can overwhelm a ground person if you're doing one of these trees. I took breaks often, either waited up in the tree or in, in some cases I actually got down and went over and helped my ground person stack and organize. Uh, it, it, because you, you really safely, you can't, you can't be under the tree with these you know, death clubs coming down at you with big spines. So you have to you have to cut and cut and cut and then take a break so the guy on the ground can feel safe that things aren't going to come flying down at him. So I, I just you know went up and down with the, the bucket a few times. So it took me about an hour apiece uh, just to do the 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 pruning of these things. Um, you know with you know some water breaks in between. Drink lots of water because man you're choking on this dust. It was nasty. So uh, another thing I wanted to briefly talk about is um, dealing with this kind of brush. It chips okay, but it seems to fluff up in the truck. So we had a truck, um, our bucket was there, the big bucket that we were using to chip into, and we had other brush in there. So I made the decision to stack all the brush with all the, the butt ends in the same direction. So you can pick up bundles of about six at a time and you pick them up in the middle you don't pick them up near where the spikes are and then you can run them over and then you set them in the chipper and you can you can feed them in four or five at a time uh, and that goes pretty well but uh, if you chip into an empty truck this stuff will fluff up and it'll, it'll actually fill the truck up really quickly but if you go over to another tree and you chip on top of it the weight of the heavier chips will will settle it down, and you can get twice as much in the load. Uh, it you know it was it was a smart move. I was really surprised when when I chipped into it. I don't have any video of us chipping, but three of us got on the job, and it, it's uh, it's really really helpful to have two or three people uh, working. If you have one person chipping this stuff, it takes forever. You know, because it's not like dragging huge branches and feeding these big things through. You're, you're constantly aware of these spikes. And, you know, so you can only pick up, you know, like I said, five or six at a time. And, and the small bits. So it, it's a real nuisance. Everything about this job is a nuisance. Yeah. Not sure I like that super wide angle. But it, it does give you a good perspective of what the job was like. Okay, a little bit about my old bucket. Um, this is a, a Hydro Grouper bucket. I don't think they make them anymore. They made them in Brazil. This is a this is the third truck that I've mounted this in. It has its own individual pony motor. And I've got it in a, a small, low-profile one-ton. My one-ton has dualies. But the nice thing about it is I can get up underneath trees. I can drive it on the lawns. I can get it into a lot of tight areas that I can't get our bigger bucket into, and it, it does uh, help out considerably. There I am, in and out of that bucket. 
It's a little awkward. I don't have a nice ladder set up or anything over there, but I've, I've set up a, a nice procedure stepping down onto the tires. While I was out at this site, um, I was, uh, well, there's, there's the brush on the ground. I still got a lot more trimming to go. I wish I had shown the brush all stacked. Uh, that would have been helpful. Oh, this is interesting. These uh, shots here show where a gardener made a cut on a tree and he didn't undercut it and it ripped. And to hide it, he put dirt on it. This is a tree that I did uh, earlier this week. It's a strawberry tree in Arbutus. And uh, I was working for a retired arborist from, the, from one of the local cities. And she said she only wanted me to do the tree. So I was not only a little bit concerned about doing a really good job, but I, I was honored that uh, she only wanted me to do it. Thanks for watching and uh, please subscribe to my channel and uh, hit that like button.